And here we go. This is Flash Somebody at 20% off on, well, it's Friday morning for me, but according to the clock, it's uh, about two minutes after midnight, the 22nd of February, 2019, and I... I did that as a special favor for my good friends at reallibertymedia.com because I'm always telling you I live in your future. I'm already in Friday. Beat that. Anyway, <laughs> a little, I don't know, slight of word to start the program off tonight. And like to say hey to Grimner who gets the program out there and amongst the uh, listening internet world give them a chance to pick us out of the many choices that there seems to be and I like to say hi to the the bots and the bodies at the real liberty media dot com chat because that's the uh, it's not like the headquarters or anything. This is where the the crew that uses RLM when when they want to chat, they go to the chat room. But we carry all kinds of different channels. Is this something you got to see it to believe it? Anyway, hmm. back to my hellos to the bots and bodies. And let me get to the top here. I think I got my thing down too far. Ha. We got Barman at the top, Grimner, Moose Girl, Brackets DC, Anti Asmo, Chalcedony, and me. Graham Z, Ivy Don C, J Dread, Meister Brow, Ponder Gander, Miss Kate, Rain, and the refurbished RLM Fluke. We got Rob Works, the Bubbler. Trust number one, Vinny, Phantom, Beetle, Cyborg, Nuda, Dakota, Frumpy, and Canada, da. Gromit, Guest 81215, Java Doctor 2, Kozu Kiss, mm, Nensen, Dubois, <laughs> Ponsa, Sock Puppet, Tech Man, and Uno. So... Oh, I know, Grimner. You don't have to tell me. We we banter about me making up the news all the time. He he says I'm misdirecting you with lies and propaganda. Damn, I'm good, too, because I learned most of the shit I know from you people. <laughs> so, <coughs> I'm not really sure what Hansel's talking about. But he is kind of an interesting character for those of you who uh, like to be taught the wrong of your ways, the evil of your doings, where you are going wrong. We have people to fix you. Yeah, just come on over to the reallibertymedia.com chat and pick a topic. And that's the beauty about words is they're such bullshit that everybody thinks they know what they're talking about. And I got a funny suspicion that we're all wrong, all of us. The ones that are doing it, the way ups with all the billions and the banking and all that shit, they know what the fuck's going on. It's the rest of us idiots stand here scrambling around like a bunch of ants doing our little job. Know, going here to there to get this done, to accomplish that, to pay the bills. So that you can be a good functioning member of society. And what really irritates me is the, the lack of interest people have into looking into the cause of all their problems. They go, well, these illegal immigrants. Hmm. It strikes me as strange that a government that financially supports illegal immigrants gives a flying fuck about what you think about it. But 
it's nice to complain, isn't it? Oh, I like to bitch about how it is over there and how it is over there. But I'm never going to go over there. Especially not to do anything about it. And as far as me in America, I left America. There you go. I did something. So, as much as people, like, I've got relatives. Hey, you don't live here anymore. You don't have an opinion. Well, yeah, I do. That's exactly what an opinion is, you butt nugget. Look up the definition of the words you throw around once in a while and find out what they really mean. You will be amazed at what you will find because not only have you been deceived but as you speak you spread the deception like a like a shit in the wind you know it's gonna get on somebody hope it's not me hmm. anyway yeah today we spend a little time bantering in the real liberty media.com chat about me posting fabrications, making up laws, stories, and such. What the fuck did I say laws for? Anyway, huh, back to my point. Uh, hmm. It was very amusing. But, you know, it just goes to show how opinion surfaces in the written world. Because, wow, we communicate like a bunch of chimpanzees throwing shit at each other. Zerk's so disappointed in it, she doesn't even want to log on to the site for a while. She went, no, you guys are too mean. I that all you do is fight. Well, she's kind of got a point. But it seems like the people that I agree with, compared to the people I don't agree with, hmm, well, if I cared to vote, <laughs> we all know where that would end up. So, I've been trying to let people know about my new understanding of the word anger. <clears throat> and some things have happened on the online world during the last month or so. And this started with the physical breakdowns of the equipment. For absolutely no apparent reason. Just suddenly, this thing did not work on that particular computer that particular day. Got me one time mid-show. The headphones just died. And it turned out, in the long run to explain it, I suppose, it just needed a, a, a new driver to accommodate it. But before you knew you needed the driver... The system shuts it off, so the, the old driver doesn't work. Well, and this was no, with no warning. We had no idea these things were going to happen. Uh, I believe it happened to Grim on a piece of equipment he had. He said all of a sudden the card took a shit. Boom, don't work. And uh, he had radio to do that night. But fortunately, Miss Moose picked up a new system. So she has the equipment to do solo if necessary she just didn't record it i totally understand that in a panic uh, i do it anyway if i can remember to but i don't know we've had uh, a lot of what would you call it planned obsolescence thrown right in our face it depends on the light that you want to look at it in. i'm sure and I don't know. I'm going to go with the, the obsolescence because the breakdowns were so wreck. They were like regular. It was happening every other couple days. Something's been breaking down. Or this equipment doesn't work with Windows. Or this doesn't work with Linux or whatever have you. It's been one nightmare after the other. Me and Vinny couldn't collect, connect on wire so that we could do the show. Go figure. I mean, we do this stuff on Thursday, and then, or Tuesday, and then Saturday. All of a sudden, nothing working. So, I don't know. Maybe these conspiracy theorist folk have something to talk about. You never know. They could be on to something, because uh, everything the fucking system tells us turns out to be, hoo-hoo. <laughs> 
a load of, if you'll pardon the expression, <coughs> royal shit. Anyway, so I got a special treat. Rob asked me to do a little reading tonight on the 20% of podcast because this is the show I try to just do solo. And uh, the weekend and the Tuesday night thing, I like to do those with other people. It's way more entertaining. But this was a project I thought I'd tackle on my own to get over my radio jitters and uh, try to leave behind something that was kind of amusing and kind of serious. So tonight, I'm going to read for my real Liberty Media people and bots. <sighs> Bar Associations are cults by Mark Stevens. Now, before I start reading the this link is, I'm going to post the damn thing too, because the link is, it's hard to read some of this stuff in the style that I talk, so bear with me on this, because we had fun with the, with the story Tuesday night, and then I, I was getting carried away and interrupted and doing voices and whatnot, but there's the whole length in it, the whole length, the link in its entirety for your optical perusal and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click back on here see if my tea's cool enough for a sip and on uh, let me a uh, quick pause here and then I'll start to read the epic bar associations or cults by Mark Stevens okay I read something this week so ironic, I had to write an article about it. There is a website run by an attorney named Dan Evans. This is the post he wrote. Okay, good point. And didn't we notice we once have a Thread on tax protesting as a cult. Hmm. Given the overall condescending attitude of Mr. Evans displays towards anyone who questions the legitimacy of government, especially taxes, it's clear he used the word cult to ridicule. <laughs> Let's look at the irony of a member of a bar association referring to people who don't believe the taking of property by force, in parentheses to seize, taxation, is legitimate as a cult. Like any cult, a bar association is individual men and women. Hey, wait a minute, what about the other 28 genders aren't? Don't they get represented? Okay. Cults have always had, see it says have, always had leaders. The leaders of the bar cult are supreme and make the rules. Which cult members must follow or suffer punishment? That includes getting excommunicated or disbarred from the cult. These supreme leaders wear black robes, the symbolic meanings of which are kept secret to people outside the cult. When outsiders ask what the symbolism is of the black robe, the response is usually laughter, with suggestions, with <laughs> the question is silly, which suggests the question is silly. I wrote, rewrote that for the guy. Unlike the bar cult, there is no symbolic clothing required to question the legitimacy of government. Yeah, question the legitimacy. And you know what you get? You get some idiot ranting about how they protect him and they do all this and they do all that. And all that fucker ever does is complain about what they do. But 
somehow overlooks the part of the being responsible for the government that you want representing you. Oh, no, 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 that's the other side making us do that. It's those Democrats. Back to your story. <clears throat> there is no compulsory association. One must join to question the legitimacy of government and taxes as there is with the bar cult. Members of the cult must pay the supreme leader's offerings, euphemistically called dues. If the cult member does not pay his dues, then he is severely punished. Other cult members lower in the hierarchy than the supreme leaders, usually only superior, will not permit the cult member to continue working to earn a living. Ah, who wants to be a slave anyway? Come on, people, wake up. Smell the cactus. Get your face right in there. Don't let those little needles scare you. Face off with them. Take a deep breath. I mean, Christ, if you'll vote, maybe you'll sniff cactus too. They flower. Uh, and back to the story. Wannabe cultists must spend tens of thousands of dollars to be taught how to think like a member of the cult. Ah, this is cool. These so-called schools must be approved by the supreme leaders or the education, regardless of the quality, is not recognized by the cult. Wow, what a game. The indoctrination, this is one of my favorite ones, thank you Rob. The indoctrination of wannabe cult members must be strictly controlled and not influenced by outsiders. The supreme leaders ensure no one outside the cult is permitted to teach the wannabe cult members. Outsiders are dealt with harshly. Cult members believe outsiders should be caged for practicing the craft of the cult. While most people outside the cult believe caging people for writing is extreme and unwarranted, cult members are taught it's necessary and are encouraged to report outsiders to the supreme leaders so punishment may be dealt. Whew, boy, this is freedom! <laughs> okay, sorry Rob. Because this is for Rob Works. I would have never thought of picking the link and reading it. And Rob gives me a thing and says, hey, read this. See what you, and I have a lot of fun because I'm probably half crazy. Well, I'm 20% off, but I'm shooting for the stars, people. Okay. Once the education is completed, the wannabe cult members are taken into a special room where only cult members are permitted to practice their craft. The wannabe cultists must participate in an initiation ritual or ceremony wherein they raise their arms in unison and chant an oath together. The chant not being sufficient, each new cult member must also sign a loyalty oath. That's so you can thank Israel for that, man. We got you people tied and bound, and I ain't even a Israeli guy, <laughs> but it's fun to to be one. Well, for the moment, it's going to end someday, but not probably in my lifetime. Back to the epic saga, as cult members progress and become honorable. They are permitted to wear black robes to, to distinguish them from ordinary cult members. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> cult members wearing the symbolic black robes require all cult members and outsiders alike to stand and remain standing when they enter the special room where they practice their craft. Only after the cult member has taken his seat may everyone sit down. All are also required to stand and remain standing when the black robed cult member stands and leaves the special room. These reasons why remain hidden. 
the black robe cult member also for secret symbolic reasons always sits several feet off the floor i have not been able to determine the symbolic meaning of black robe cult members sitting higher than everyone else well that doesn't take much to figure that out you're sitting above somebody guess where they gotta look at your balls think about it. you got them right there facing off with your balls come on you win <laughs> How do you fight somebody that's looking down at you in a black robe? Okay. <laughs> the best. <laughs> I can't help it. This just makes me giggle. Uh, okay. One of the extraordinary powers the black robe cult members have in the special room where all rise at their arrival and exit is a godlike power to influence men with guns and badges. Cult members without the black robe cannot order men with guns to cage people who ask them questions, but honorable cult members do have men with guns who impulsively carry out their orders without exercising any discretion. Ask a cult member with a black robe a question he doesn't like, and he'll order men with guns to toss you in a cage. Cult members do not seem to have a problem with such violence. Yeah, when I was writing just sentences of this link out, boy, I took a ass whipping from the man, man. He was all about a making up communist propaganda to try and lead the RLM to the eternal depths of moral depravity and human degradation. But you're already there, so I can't really do any harm. Anyway, <clears throat> to continue with this epic story, facts and arguments, regardless of the merits, do not exist if presented by an outsider. An example is people, X. R.E.L. Department of Public Works, First Malone, two three two Calamp T.D. five three one comma five three seven. You know, blah, blah 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 blah. Cult members pretend anything presented by an outsider does not really exist. Only cult members in good standing with the supreme leaders may present facts. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> this is too good. Truth <laughs> for the cult is dictated by the supreme leaders. Cult members spend years researching and memorizing the sayings or rulings of their dead supreme leaders. Whenever there's an issue, their first thought is to see what they're dead. Supreme leaders have said, to the cult there is no principle or tenet, unless a supreme leader declares it so. The cult uses the word precedent to explain why the principle or rule does not exist. Wow. Boy, this is a long read. I'm going to take a short tea and um, think break from this for just a second Rob works isn't this quite the lengthy little bit of reading here making my tumor just do all kinds of shit in my mind and then the more I read of it wow I mean that's the truth of this horrible game is pitiful I think I'm going to poke over to the RLM just give me a few minutes have a little sip of tea light up a new smoker and uh, ketchup in my head. But, wow, what a story I'm reading here, you know? And uh, But th the fun part about it was that it was Rob Works that sent me the link, and I was just posting lines out of it and getting such an ass-whipping for posting, you know, this makeup shit that I just write. No, I didn't read this the other day, Beetle. I was reading a story. Uh, Rob's been the only one that really bothered to send me anything to have fun with. I I don't know. Just so I went with it. But it's a similar story. It's just this is this is about lawyers instead of the you know the federal government sending a kid off to die. Well, get his legs blown off. Come back and expose him. 
But have you noticed how much trouble words cause? I think words cause an equal amount of trouble as physical shit happens to cause. Just uh, at a, you know, what was that? Brain waves, you know, emotional waves, whatever waves. There's this whole invisible world we don't even know is there because we can't see it. And if you can't see it, well, then it ain't there. And the, the really ridiculous part is we have wireless. Nobody can see that until you turn something on and look at it. So the wireless is there anyway, isn't it? Hmm. Let us ponder, just ponder the concept for a minute. Okay, that was fun. Now, um, I will take a sip of elixir and get back to Rob's input into the 20% off program for the 22nd of February. 201 and 9. Oh, thanks, Rob. This story is making me laugh. Oi, oi, oi. Okay. Continuing with the story. Truth for the cult is dictated by... Did I already read that? Yes, I already did. Sorry, folks. The cult uses its own language, which, of course, is dictated by the supreme leaders. To this cult, the word person may mean two people or even a city and just like witches and warlocks demonstrated in that potter series the bar cult is very fond of using latin words and phrases such as reductio ad absurdum and pro se in their craft i think reductio ad absurdum is the chanted used to drive dementors away hey i'm glad i didn't write all of this but some of it some of it's had me on my butt just laughing i couldn't even read i was like wow somebody else noticed besides me that there's a chicken in the hen house baby get it the chicken in the never mind in their paperwork, they do not request the honorable black-robed cult member for specific relief. No! Cult members pray to each other or offer a prayer for relief to black-robed cult members. He forgot the S. Some cults still offer a prayer to their lord as the cult member is referred to as Lord or lord high chancellor and then it says prayer dot dot that part of a pleading which designates and asks for the relief sought by the party valentine's law dictionary page nine seven and four this cult enjoys a monopoly over their craft that is assisting people in various situations i.e real estate transactions and planning, contract negotiations, business structuring, and court cases. The craft consists of mostly writing and speaking. This monopoly is not due to the market freely choosing to contract and pay for their services. It's a coercive monopoly. <laughs> This cult does not believe their customers should have any choice in which, in whom they have assist them. Only cult members. This cult uses aggression, not bringing superior services to the market, to defeat competitors, non-cult members. The bar cult is constantly employing violence and threats of violence to outsiders and excommunicated cult members who dare infringe on the cult's monopoly. Their extreme views extend to caging a man who's done nothing more than quietly voice an opinion. An example from California is, holy schmoly, I don't know what the sign is, 6126A of the Business and Professions Code. Any person advertising or holding himself or herself out as practicing or entitled to practice law or otherwise practicing law who is not an active member of the state bar 
or otherwise authorized pursuant to statute or court rule to practice law in this state at the time of doing so whew, is guilty of a misdemeanor punishable up by up to one year in a county jail or by a fine of up to one thousand dollars well that's only like 20 bucks now big whoop or by both that fine and imprisonment Wow, slap. Let's give you some punishment for your damn argumentative behavior, you little rap scallion. What a bunch of morons. The bar cult believes providing an excellent service to a customer on a purely voluntary basis is a hyenas crime. Also take notice that guilt has already been pronounced. Yes as uh, the leaning towards the voter side of the crowd who I engage verbally, I would say, it seems like the voting people are more the death penalty and the non-voting people are more live and let live and, you know, stab them in the side at lunch or something. But, you know, don't put it on the state. Be a man and do it yourself. Fuck, always getting the cops to do the dirty work. And those dumbasses do it. Okay, back to the rule. <laughs> I was giving you a little help on your, you know, your police links and such. Because can't read the chat and read the story at the same time. So I have no idea. You guys might have all tuned out by now. This cult routinely, routinely, help me, routinely... <laughs> Threatens people stating they need a license to practice law issued by the state government. When in reality, there is no license to practice law issued by the state government. And don't ask a cult member to display his license to practice law when in their special room, a court. The honorable cult member will have men with guns throw you out of the building, if not into a cage what logic? Only outsiders are required to have a license to practice law issued by the state government. Just like driving on the damn street, driving a car, riding a car, traveling in a car, picking your nose at a stoplight. I don't know. Whatever crap you call being in a freaking moving vehicle is. These, figure, these, <laughs> these people figured out how to turn our freedoms into financial gain for a system and here we are still after all these years collectively okay where do i sign let me have my paper let me have my license oh please because not enough people understand the truth about what i'm reading it's this simple too it's not as it, fighting it might be a little bit more difficult but knowing this going in gives you a doorway to find out how how to fight these people like uh, Hal Anthony's tried to help people with all along. You can't fight them with what you think you know because that's what they want you to do. There's another way. And it's, it's pretty much all paperwork. But they've got us TV'd and they think, oh, we'll get them into the building and, and then they're, boom. Not only have you consented by being there, but when they call your name, you answer to it like a dumbass. And the next thing you know, you're belonging to the court. You don't even know it. Just hope the judge likes your face or you might not come home. Stay away for a little vacation for something you had nothing to do with. And people go, well, the cops wouldn't do that. But... I've seen documentaries of people released after 30 years on death row because DNA proved they didn't do it. Well, if they prove they did it, then how did they unprove they did it? Nah, some inept fucking police, crooked police, that all that. And then they cover it up with DNA investigation. Oh yeah, they just happen to have a fresh sample of 30-year-old murder DNA laying around and said, hey, why don't we analyze this shit and free us a death row inmate? <sighs> That's what I mean by <laughs> people will believe just the most insane stories, you know. 
it would never occur to the normal guy to think, I wonder if this is just another performance by the government to continue the lie of all these freaking vicious murderers that lurk around every corner, every building, every freaking gas station, and everywhere you go, you're just lucky to escape the next murder victim statistic. You know, and I don't know. I, maybe it's gotten that bad, but it wasn't like that when I was there. So, Meanwhile, back at the story, <laughs> while I may not agree with the legal interpretations of people called tax protestors or tax resistors, for a member of a bar association to characterize them as a cult does little more than demonstrate close-mindedness and an, uh, an impenetrable bias. Yes, bias. All members of this cult are government and have an economic interest in making sure most people continue believing gov government <laughs> is legitimate. Without government, they would lose their monopoly and the thought of people freely choosing who will assist them must fill them with horror. That is the primary reason why they summarily dismiss anything questioning the legitimacy of government regardless of the merits. It conflicts with their model of the world and they cannot accept anything to the contrary. Some refuse to accept they are government. Let the evidence speak for itself. Yeah, evidence speak for yourself. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Note, as an outsider of the cult, I must be taking everything out of context. Also, there is no need to overlook at the evidence to... <laughs> there is no need to look at the evidence if you have already made up your mind. The conclusion is absurd. Always look at the conclusion first. Never examine the supporting facts. Nobody does that, Rob. Come on. <laughs> From the Arizona Supreme Court. Acting within the powers vested in it by the Constitution of this state and its inherent power over members of the legal profession as officers of the court. Why well, not? Rule 31A. Upon admission to the state bar, an applicant shall also, in open court, take and Subscribe an oath to support the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona in the form provided by the Supreme Court. Rule 31C3, and lawyers, a representative of clients, an officer of the legal system, and a public citizen. A lawyer's responsibility as a representative of clients, an officer of the legal system, and a public citizen. Okay, that's kind of not taking me anywhere. Rob, what did I get into here? Help, help, I'm falling. <laughs> this is true, I'll, I got lost anyway. From North Carolina, <clears throat> excuse me, preamble, 0 0.1 preamble. A lawyer's responsibilities, a lawyer as a member of the legal profession, is a rep representative of clients, an officer of the legal system, and a public citizen having special responsibility for the quality of justice. What a load of shit. And they work for the fucking judge. Come on. Nobody can be this lame that there's three guys that all know each other and they don't know any of you, but you're going to come out of it ahead of them. Please. All right. Well, uh, and they're, they're getting too cold. And it, I made it to the end, to the comments almost. You know what? I'm going to end it with that, Rob. It's getting a little too um, nitpicky, but it was a good link. And it really did explain. <laughs> it explained the, uh, what you call it, the legal system, the way I, I see it. I don't know about the way other people see it. Some people get a big kick out of seeing somebody else's suffering. You know, and you're you're innocent till you're proven guilty in a court of fucking law is what I grew up with. But every time somebody is engaging the police in any freaking way, there is a certain amount of people that just assume the cops are right. No matter what the circumstances, no matter what you can prove the cops did, 
those dummies are still back there. Oh, but they were afraid for their life. They had to shoot the Chihuahua. It was going to bite them on the ankle. And that works for some people, you know. Don't work for me. I wonder what I would do if uh, if the Danish cops turned out to be as horrible as the American cops. Well, I wonder if that would have fucked with my relationship with Cirque. I doubt it because I'm so old. I'm not, you know, I don't attract the police anymore. They just go, hey, old guy, get out of my way. But, you know, 20 years ago, they liked pestering me every now and again. Well, a little over that. Stopped in 98, but God, I still remember the last time these dumbass cops were pestering me. I was coming back from a grocery store. You're in a drug neighborhood. It's 20,000 people on the freaking street. And I'm the guy in that, that's going to support the terrorists buying a you know bag of drugs. <laughs> At least they didn't take my groceries and take me to jail or any of that shit. Just let me go. But it was just that that intrusive harassment. You didn't even do anything. You got some idiot with a freaking badge thing. He's saving the world by bothering you. But, oh, I'm telling you, Rob. I'm going to read a little bit of chat here. And Rob is uh, chit-chatting with Donna. I see a little chitter-chattery going on and. Oh, we got old uh, pancakes. Hey, mental pancakes popped in for a minute, I guess. And we got Rob Works and Jay Dredd, and they're all chatting it up on the reallibertymedia.com, having all kinds of fun. While I was reading this very informative article about a man's perspective towards the judicial system. And whenever you have a system... You have something that, in the end, is doomed to malfunction, I think. And I've read some other people's opinions. I've always thought Einstein was a hack. Now, I've been more of a Tesla fan since the 80s. I never did like Edison. And, uh, hmm. Well, I've seen some quotes on the Internet over the years that don't fit the timeline or the speech pattern that I would expect a man from Eastern Bloc Europe that migrated to the United States. There was an intellectual that he would write little things that would be memed on the internet. So, see, it, they mock us with our own uh, answer. They make the truth look ridiculous, and they may make the ridiculous look like the truth. That that seems to be just freaking no oh, hey pancakes. That makes uh, you know most people giggle when other people are suffering the uh, the incompetence of the organized uh, law enforcement in group. I don't know what to call these morons, but you know you're not being served the public isn't being served by the best of the best the best of the best are hiding in colleges trying to avoid going to war or they're getting their sex changed or they're getting their fucking tubes tied or their lips lifted or their fucking assholes reamed but they're doing everything except applying to be law enforcement so you got to think where does law enforcement where do those people come from and not all of them could start out in the uh, negative, shitty hole. I think it's a hole that you're pushed into by your peers over a period of time. Conform or be cast out. And if you've noticed the behavior, I mean, just the way these guys stand in a, in public in the streets. And I'm not too fond of Europe either, so I'm not just picking on the U.S. There's lots of other shitty countries as far as police go. Uh I wasn't in England during the period where it went to shit. I was there bef- like pre, it was just in the footsteps of going to shit. And I was doing my visiting there. Now, Scotland, I spent a lot of time on the islands, so that was a dead end. It didn't matter. Those people weren't going to welcome the 21st century, no matter how you brought it to them. 
Now, Denmark, I don't know. I can't make heads or tails of this place. I mean, they're right smack dab in the freaking center of United Nations land. This is where, you know, the this is... <laughs> There's nothing here to attract any fucking body. People want to come here during the summer to vacation, but the government doesn't allow it. You can oh, you can vacation, but you can't buy a house to vacation here. Like they're they have different kind of land ownership rules. But here's the thing I started to give some consideration to is this is a little tiny freaking country. This place is small. I mean, big for me, because I'm little. I couldn't walk across it in like a day or something like that. No, it's bigger than that. But, America is huge. Oh, very huge. It makes huge look small, how big the states is. I was being Donald Trump. How'd I do, Rob? Was I getting good? Huh? 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 Now get me a mega hat. <laughs> I lead you people to salvation. Just remember... I've only got six bankruptcies to behind me, so I can't vouch for anything. Don't don't trust anything I say. I, I might be lying, but I might be telling the truth. You figure it out. <laughs> now, to me, that's the, the face of America. That's The last prick was just a bald-faced fucking liar. You could look at his face and tell he was reading a script. Cause, and any time he was ever asked a question... He stuttered worse than I do. He had no idea what to say. If it wasn't written down, Obama couldn't do it. Now, with Trump, they don't even pretend to bother to have him read anything. They, they, he's a loose cannon. He knows about 25 or 30 words. That's about the extent of it. He can't say much. <laughs> he, so they can just let him run all day on his little Twitter account and you know, he's not going to give away any security secrets because he doesn't know any of them. All he knows is I'm better than you and I'm going to build a wall. North Korea is bad, 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 very bad. Shit like that. Venezuela, bad, very bad, bad, bad. Communism, bad, bad, bad. I just did an impression of Trump. You guys should be applauding me. I, I thought it did a good job. I did it on the radio. <sighs> but I'll, you know what? I'd pay money to hear old Trump do, and I mean this sincerely, if he would do the State of the Union in Bullwinkle voice, then I, I'd listen to the State of the Union. You know, my bill, Americans, this is Donald Trump live from the White House, and I'm going to tell you all about your country. <laughs> but, no, <laughs> we get Donald Trump stuttering and stammering. He's like worse than me. He stutters and stammers his way to some shit and then forgets what he's talking about halfway through it and just ends it differently. Well, I'm the president and they gotta believe me, so who gives a shit what I fucking say? And that's the way I'm looking at This is comic relief at its finest. I mean, Bush was funny. Okay, Obama was annoying and like a girl. You know, it was embarrassing. I thought, wow, what a swishy fag they put in there. You know, they had they couldn't put a a strong black guy in there. They had to put some swishy guy that couldn't even. I mean, he couldn't even bowl. He couldn't even basketball. He he was wow. He was so white. <laughs> I swear, that was so funny. Eight years of that shit. And uh. Well, he was still running the place when I left. Running the place. <laughs> Doing Monsanto's bidding. You know, you got GMO in the food, baby. It's going to feed the world. Yeah, that's why Venezuela's making arms deals. Because GMOs are going to feed the world. People get used to it. So I think tonight I'm going to call tonight's show Assume the Assumption. You know, and, oh yeah, let me take a few minutes to do a fundraising break for the good folks at reallibertymedia.com where your funds are needed. Yep, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of year, the special time after the holidays, after the new year, after fucking Valentine's Day. And yes, we have the nerve 
to come on here on the radio and remind you one more time in the month of February. Yep, Grim can use some help. And it's uh, all the help you give Grim goes to the site. It's not a personal thing. But, you know, over the year, the site comes up with little expenses. Yeah, can former be cast out? Works in lots of ways there, Rob Works. But, <laughs> so wait. <laughs> anyway, but oh, back to my um, begging time. Yeah, uh, if you got it, you know, cash, currency, Bitcoin, dodgy coin, up your nose coin, fiat, checks, credit cards, whatever you got. Got a little silver laying around, mail it to him. He don't mind. He'll handle it. Uh, but, you know, this site will come up some crap will come up and they'll want money and Grimm doesn't do this every freaking five minutes this is a yearly thing so to end that nonsense if you got a few bucks help him out if you don't don't do what you do because that's what the world is all about and thank you for participating in my little pitch for Grimner <laughs> That smells like a Rush song. Oh, hey, Rush Rush is over. They no more Rush. And they did it. They went out in style. Uh, Neil Pert was having arthritis problems. Ha, ha, ha. All that money and he doesn't know about rosehip and gelatin. I seriously doubt it. But according to the band, when I, I was younger and followed more closely about what musicians might have to say in a certain interview uh it was common that the drummer neil pert was not a people person he liked to be left alone and he left all the adoring fans that he could leave to getty and leave but erickson and lee are now there's no more no more it's over no more rush and I think I got that name stuff sorted out. I'm pretty sure I did. But I seen a thing about it on YouTube today for a few minutes. And it, it just crossed my mind. And then I saw, you know, the con conformer be cast out that Rob noticed and brought that up. And, oh, I should probably just find me a pipe load and sit back and read something else. <laughs> okay, anyway, assume the assumption on 20% off this evening with me flash you know the reason i use that name flash was when i first started to try to get rid of the slave name all i did was just change my last name to somebody to be somebody not uh, not the center of the fucking world just another guy doing something and some people are gonna like it and some people ain't the way my real life has always been never been one to entertain everybody you know i was off in a corner with a few people that understood what i was fucking talking about <laughs> small audiences of small people and the people that i get to talk to on the radio and i me and uh me and grim and moose and mary and whoever else is out hal anthony i'll cry out loud who else is on here now still well i think that's it mary grim moose hal me, Vincent, and I've looked over on the bit shoot and gone, I wonder how far back these things go. And I found a, a link back about three months where uh, something that Grimm did and something I did both hit over 100 people checking it out. And for as many sites as there are to find, that's, that's, a, that's an audience, especially considering what we think and how we repre represent what we think. It's not popular, so I, I'm starting to see, you know, not that they're desperate yet, but it's coming. And and as it gets more desperate in reality, I believe more people will start listening to the reality that they've been ignoring or, or trying to hide from. Because hiding from it's real easy. You just close your eyes, blah, 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 nan, 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 and boo, boo, it's not there, I'm okay. You know, I'm what's that i'm rubber and you're glue and all that childish crap you know those little word games that we play about how much i'm smarter than you i know better than you <laughs> it's so funny we we did this all afternoon it was like um 
I don't know. It's like kind of remedial math, you know, and I don't need to study remedial math. <laughs> but I hang around with people that do. And, you know, the sad part about it, they don't know. Um, the, the people that are behind think they're ahead. And the people that are ahead don't make any claim to be any fucking where. We're just talking about how things really seem, how they really look, how they really are. If you're an adult and you can open your eyes, then you can see that you're being fucked in every possible position there is by a government that lies to you in every area of life and I, good lord i'm trying to be original on my own show because well i've pretty much run the course of government banking medicine those are the three most important things in the average joe's life and those are the three things i got rid of as fast as i found them holy shit government what a fucking boondoggle that is Google boondoggles sometime. <laughs> hey, Rob works. Yeah. Um, far as a home, yeah, sure. Uh, I I still prefer the small. And uh, the cat here has had a problem for a couple days. And Cirque's not happy about it. Now, I'm indifferent because I don't, I don't know how to tell how old he is, but... We've been here five years, and he was already here and well-grown by the time we got here. So, somewhere between maybe 10 and 15. And he's an outdoor cat, so he lives a little rough between meals. You know, sometimes he'll just disappear, not come back for a couple weeks. And this time he came back. He's been home, but he, he went out and he came back, and uh, he's not looking too good. So... Mm, what a thing to find out. You know, it's like, uh, I got radio to do tonight. Cat, can't you be sick at a more comfortable time for me? <laughs> mm. But those things only happen on Tuesday night because Tuesday night's in a perfect world. Tonight, 20% off. So, I don't know. And I'm one of those that... Uh, how do you explain this to other people? I I don't not mourn death. I just don't worry and panic until death takes place because I've seen some incredible recoveries in my history. I had one of my own. Uh, two, if you count kicking the blood pressure medicine, because, uh, oh yeah, I was going on about that on the internet yesterday, I think. Because uh, when I found out that the uh, side effects of the high blood pressure medication pills were uh, capable of doing damage to my kidneys. So they wanted to check it to make sure I hadn't gone beyond the limits of damage. And I was like, okay, uh, you know, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. <laughs> I did one of those ski daddle like a scared 10 year old and getting a fucking flu shot said no way big daddy and uh just snapped like that went well you know what if the cure is that freaking risky i'm gonna risk the disease and guess what here we are so and i did that i, th I can't remember the month i think it was november but it had to be 11 because i was in scotland the first yeah, the first year I got to Scotland, it was like right away, a couple of months. But I thought I mentioned it as 12 once. So regardless, this is 2019. I haven't taken a pill, a uh, prescription pill since that. And, well, if you can't, you may not be able to tell a person's health and well-being by the tone and sound of their voice. But at least it's better than... Uh, typing and all about how wonderful I am and never being able to prove it with his freaking great voice. <laughs> hey, that was good. I like that. I think I'm going to write that down. Quote me, Rob. I am quotable. And uh, anyway. And earlier, me and, me and Vincent were, we were debating amongst 
you know, me and Vinny, we, we have uh, conversations away from the room where we, we really interact, and, and it's still the same. A lot of screwy voices and, and googly ideas, but uh, me and Vinny have done what we're, what we're trying to show other people what they need to do. And that's, I guess, go through the shitty times verbally and, you know, calm down and then re-up and try to work it out and then go on. But see what happens with uh, most of us, and a lot of people are very unforgiving when it comes to being verbally insulted. It's rude. It's rude and it stings. And when people throw names at you, it feels like, oh man, my friends are laughing at me because Hansel is calling me a drug addled hippie and I must be smoking and huffing and all blah, 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 blah. And I realize that. Uh, no, that's his, his little, you know, that's all he knows. He's, he's limited. So uh, I'm not personally insulted by that stuff. Now, Vinny's the kind of guy, you ask Vinny what color his socks are, motherfucker, he gonna show them to you. Be careful what you ask that man. Ooh. And as far as I can tell, uh, Vinny goes out of his way to tell the truth. He's so freaking honest, it's painful. So, I would, I would recommend Vinny for uh, somebody to chat with. You know, as far as away from the typing, because the typing screws us all up. We, you know, we get all in these hurries and we type words backwards and it just looks ridiculous. How can you even put out a decent argument when your freaking words are typed and you got one word missing? <laughs> Three words spelled wrong. <laughs> it's, it's a joke. We're not arguing. Even my wife, I tell her, good Lord, sir, that's not fucking arguing. <laughs> I'm just goofing around on the internet. It's not serious. But it does take my mind off the um, other things in life, like my cat. Because I don't want to think of... I'm lazy like that. I don't want to think about things that haven't happened. I want to know what is. And I'm not a, qualified to look at the cat and tell you. I can say, yeah, he doesn't look good, or yeah, he looks good, and that's it. Mm. Oh, Vincenzo on the reallibertymedia.com chat says, I'm flattered when someone takes the time to insult me. Yeah, I know, Vinny, but I don't know. It's it's a catch-22. We're fueling the fucking void and loving it. And see, there, there's got to be a better way, but... The illusion that everybody's either right or wrong has got us all bickering amongst ourselves like a bunch of kids, a bunch of children. My toy's better than your toy. Your toy's just made up. Mine's real. It's made out of that, 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 that. And good God, you know, you read something and you either you agree with it or you don't. How it shakes your life. Wow, that's beyond me. Because all I got out of those um, out of the sentences of the link that I posted and the link that I read was a man's opinion about an existing body of judicial. Bink. So what? That's his opinion. Now, I have two choices. I can say, well, that sounds like a happy load of shit and I don't agree with two sounds of it. Or... I could read it and go, well, this guy might be on something. I wonder what this really means. And in that area, I'd pursue it further and say, hmm. But to just start insulting it because you don't agree with it, that's kind of lame. That doesn't prove it. Or to accuse me of uh, writing fake news. I don't post news. I don't give a flying fuck about the news. I live in Denmark, for fuck's sake. A hundred countries can be invaded tomorrow. Ain't going to bother me any, except I might not be able to get my tomatoes, depending on who gets invaded. But outside of a little financial disruption of maybe a supply or two we couldn't get, I don't know. I don't think it would matter. Because there's nothing here for anybody to want except to go somewhere where there's more people that they could skin. 
because there's nothing here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that, but Rob and Vinny are having a little bantering session of their own on the reallibertymedia.com chat. Because, see, that's the whole thing is, some people don't see eye to eye, and that's what the room is for, so they can knock on, knock it out and, you know, put it out there. Now, the thing that the chat room doesn't offer that the Real Liberty Org does is a, a place to keep score of who's with you and who's again you. You know, there's no place for likes and dislikes. So at the reallibertymedia.com, you just have to take it upon yourself to assume the assumption and believe that every word you write is read by everybody on the site and they have all put you up on the pedestal and they bow to your image every day, sometimes twice, three times on Sunday. And you're the big cheese. Uh, wow. I don't want to be the big cheese. Fuck, let Robin Grimm run the freaking world. I don't want to run the fucking world. And the guy that wants to run the world, I don't want him running the world. I want the guy that don't want to do it to do it. He'll do a good job. You know why? The common consensus among the guys that don't want to run the world, the first thing they do is abolish law. Get rid of law. Get rid of paychecks to the government and everybody is free in 20 minutes. Because you have to understand, enforcement is a commodity that is bought and sold like a hooker. Yes, people, military servitude, in my opinion, isn't any freaking better than being a hooker on a street corner. At least the hooker knows that, you know, she's not <laughs> pretending anything. The military, on the other hand, those poor kids, they find out way too late if they ever find out at all. And then some of them find out while they're wherever they're at, and they get sent back, dumped off where they were from, like garbage. And yet, after 40 years of that, I've seen that homeless Vietnam vet crap since the 70s. So this uh, military abuse is nothing new. What's new is in this time in life, this history, this period of time, so everybody's so war-worn that anyone in their right mind could actually support the United States military to do anything. Or, or like this shit in Venezuela now. Venezuela was an original member of OPEC. What do you guys think changed in the upper echelon, really? Anything? Hmm? Hmm? Let, let's ponder this for just a moment now. Now, they supposedly, they've got the largest oil reserve on the planet. They just discovered this like a month ago. So, coincidentally, not only do they have the most freaking oil there is available outside of the Middle East, but their government is a bunch of communists and they need to be removed. Now, why is it every fucking time America smells oil somewhere that their public just overnight is obsessed with, hey, I never heard of this country before, but those bastards are trying to take over America, and we're going to stop them before they can. Be, you know, with all this, uh, all that hoopla during the warmer months with the invasion from the south, you know, over the wall, <laughs> they're going to invade America. <laughs> Put troops down on the border. Shoot them. <laughs> wow. So, it, if you give this any real consideration, what is the attraction? I mean, hey, let's go invade the most vicious country on the planet. Uh, well, hmm. let's see. I'm minding my own business, my little... South American country or my little Central American country somewhere. 
And how the hell do I know America even exists if I'm some uneducated mix, well, whatever it can, Central American living out in the freaking middle of nowhere? Where does all my knowledge about America come from? Does anybody <laughs> see? They they all think that the, America is the center of the world because that's what they think, but it's not. <laughs> there's a lot of people love to get the fuck out of america three million of them are in jail <laughs> actually speaking of world record the united states has more people in prison than all the other countries of the world collective so and then you harp about freedom and how badly the Venezuelans are getting treated down there in Venezuela. Why you drink fluoridated water and support, you know, corporations like Monsanto. Oh, my favorite is the Jews. You give the Jews money all day long like it's fucking wonderful. And what they do with it is so sick. And they do it to you too, but. American voters don't know that. They can't accept the truth about the Jews. And these fuckers are sneaky. Anti-Semitic. Do a little fucking reading. It's got nothing to do with what they're telling you it's got to do. And it, all it is is a manipulated word game. Because if you assume the assumption. Huh? Huh? Get it? Assume the assumption. And then you force everybody else to look like a dick if they go against you. Nine times out of ten, you're going to win. Because nobody wants to stand out of the crowd and go, Fuck you, you're full of shit. Because the other nine are going to point and laugh. Oh, oh, he's so funny. Hey, where's that Florida water at anyway? And as you all know, as I read on the dork table one time, about fluoride. <laughs> fluoride used to be domestic. They even used to poison you with your very own poison. Now, they poison you with super poison that they send away for across the sea. And they send the poison back to the United States with extra additives that they didn't have in the original package. Like arsenic. Oh. All right, now it says 40% of American water is fluoridated. All right. Well, that doesn't cover the, all the dental products and makeup products and other products that these legal fucks have snuck into. They put waste products inside other products so they don't have to bury that shit in the ground. They feed it back to us. 25%, I probably do, Rob. Thanks for fixing that. I screw up all the time. I think I'll roll another one for the last 45 minutes and really screw this up. 25% <laughs> of the world's prison population. Yeah, that's right. 5% of the world population. That was the point I was trying to make. Eh, I'm a little bit... Eh. Not good with the memory. I'm getting old, Rob Works. Going to hit the big 6 so this year. You know, if I should survive until my birthday. And the boy, what a milestone that is for me. Because, wow, I never expected to hit 50. I was surprised as fuck at 50. And here I am, nine years later, going, What? <laughs> Because to not know me personally and hear the crazy stuff I must say on the radio, it, it's got to sound like a bunch of crap. You know, because I read other people's stuff on the internet webs and I read it and I go, wow, that sounds like a bunch of crap. But then again, I'm looking at, you know, the opposite of me. I'm my my opposite would be the person that wants to tell me what to do. Because I don't want to tell anybody what to do. I just want to tell them not to do it on me. And we, we don't have personal space in the Internet. We think we do. 
there's no boundaries you can you can say things that are so ambiguous and still get that uh ad homo name in there if you do it correctly rob you agree with that one or do you disagree with you don't even need to write people's names in a certain insult you just write the insult and the person that's insulted you knew who it was going to see who was going to see it you knew it was going to get connected to you don't have to force anything but some people are a little bit more mm, colorful like use use that and they like to throw the name in there and say a certain person is say a adult or something of that <laughs> nature <laughs> because it's huge oh god we're in this freaking joke man it's not uh i i really do not take this I, my wife takes everything so damn serious and me i'm i don't know i'm just getting bitchy and grouchy uh have a little uh I don't know what edge to me, an attitude. Oh, somebody's telling somebody to shut the fuck up. Hmm. Or else. That's right. Oh, man. And, hey, wait a minute. There's some chitter-chatter. Uh, there's a new beer. Arizona bill forces people to submit DNA and pay for it. Wow. Jeez. And that was before Rob corrected my math. Thank you, Rob. Uh, there is a hole in the barrel also. Speaking of, has anybody seen Cowboy Tech? Oddly enough, I thought about that yesterday. I was hoping he was off working somewhere, but no, I haven't seen him in about four days that I can account for. But I figured, you know, all the admins on everybody else would tell us something if there was something to know. I didn't want to stir it up, so I'm glad you brought it up front. But I usually see Cowboy Tech and say hey to him all the time. Anyway, that's the big news going on right now in the Real Liberty Media dot com, the face of reality. You know, where you get all your news, all your important knowledge, all the shit you need to know so that you can go forth in this world and conquer that mountain. Oh god. The shit we're fucking taught, you know, it's like uh the individual got gobbled up by the group, but the group got ignored by society because, in, in my opinion, because they insist that you do things alone, but they never allow you the space or the room or the temperament or whatever it is that works. They don't allow that part. They just give you the words, see? Assume the assumption, because you think if you hear somebody tell you something, I believe your first instinct, if you're of the uh, honest persuasion, is to believe a person for their word until they fuck you. Then there's other people. You know what these people do? <clears throat> Whatever you tell them, nah, you're full of shit. Nah, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, go away, you're lying. No matter what you say, some... That's the mentality of a certain type of listener. Ah, thanks, Grammy. Just checked on the cowboy. Because, hmm. Most recently quitting on one week, one day. I thought it was a little bit less than that. Yeah. Um, under the Nick Mountain, man. I thought that was tech, uh, tech tra chem trailer. <clears throat> Or it might have been Cowboy Tech when I seen Mountain Men. Ah, that was Cowboy Tech. Okay, well, that's comforting. Okay, everybody's got the Cowboy Tech mystery. Kate writes up, seen Mountain Men. He was here today. I saw him for a few minutes, but I didn't know it was Cowboy Tech. Um, but he was here a few hours ago. So, if that is indeed Cowboy Tech masquerading as Mountain Man, we have solved the mystery of the missing CT. But, I don't know, man, I hate bringing up bad news. That's all I ever freaking do. Bad news, bad news, bad news. So, personal bad news about people that we actually encounter every day. Nah, I let sleeping dogs lie. I'll wait until somebody else brings it up. But, you know... I'm not a negative Nelly, so I didn't expect any bad news, so I'm not, you know, I'm pleased there wasn't any. Go figure. 
Uh, okay, Kate says he's been here every day. Well, I'm not the savvy tech guy, so, you know, I look for Cowboy Tech, CT, and then that's as far as I go, if that's not who I see. Uh, I'm not in love with names. People want to put come up under another name. Their, their typing will tell me who they are, the way they type. I'd know Beetle as any name he came in because the way he types, or Vinny, or Grimner, or Moose, or... Miss Kate, well, you name it. Everybody's got their own style to how they write stuff. And uh, I don't know. It's just a big word game any damn way. When are we going to grow up as a collective and stop being so freaking childish over my way? Is what I'd like to know. And I get accused of that, but I don't, I don't truly give a shit. If I gave a shit, I'd stop. If I care, see, the way I deal with things I care about is I don't piss them off more than I already have. Stop. Do not speak. Do not get away from it. Let it cool off for a few minutes. So, you know, like if this Hansel thing really meant anything to me, I'd just leave the site and wouldn't do it. Or I'd never speak to him. But no, this is... My wife thinks it's fighting. Everybody else seems to think it's fighting. I think it's comedy. I mean, how can you be that contrary without trying? And the stance that the man takes in a freedom... Um, based <laughs> liberty based freedom site and he's on here preaching mother state you know the cops are good the president's good all that crap you learn in grade school that you grow out of some people don't grow out of that and they take that into adulthood and have no idea how ridiculous they look with their little red hats and their flags Ugh. You know, because see, it takes something like Venezuela to get their attention to see how stupid government is. But the only problem with that is they, they end up calling it communism. See, communism doesn't work. Wow. Too ignorant to look around you and see Social Security, community, uh, <laughs> mother state, uh, where, what signs do you need? Do you need Jesus to come down from wherever and talk to you? What is your problem? I mean, I don't know. Maybe you're just one of the fortunate people that's gone through life and never had a problem with anybody. I don't know. But the way I've read the, the text on the site was he goes to, goes to Starbucks and gives the liberals a bunch of shit, but he won't put it on video and prove it. Wonder what that's about. Hey, somebody's on the name with a cool nickname. Holy fuck. Don't get me started. Hey, it's Miguel. Hola, Miguel. Welcome to the real liberty media dot com chat. I am your host, Zero De Niro. And I will bring on my wife, Mucho De Niro, in a moment. <laughs> Wow, radio. The shit we can say on the radio, because it's uh, so much easier than typing for me in the long run. Say any damn thing that comes to mind, and all I got to do is just say it. I don't have to believe it. I don't have to prove it. There's a verbal record of it right here for the whole world to go back and see. Wow, check this shit out. And I've done it in a couple of times. Me and Vinny, or me and Mary, or even a couple of times me myself, have been a bit amusing. I've enjoyed the show. Uh, the news that I carry, the message that I carry, I can see how that's not very popular with people. I sure wouldn't want to be called a slave. Boy, if I was a slave, the last thing in the fucking world I'd want anybody to rub in my face, go, hey, you're just a slave. Then I'd have, what choice would I have to say but, yeah, I know. What, what do you say to that? No. Well, if you're not a slave, then you don't have a mortgage, or you don't have a job, or you don't have a this, or you don't have a something. You're not rating on the scale, you know? And that's what this is all about. People want to impress each other with their great, uh, I have acquired all these wonderful things in my life to prove to everybody else that I have more value than them. Look at my watch, look at my car, look at my house, look at my this, look at my that. Well, 
sadly, when you look through the documents and you figure it all out, you find out that the bank will never let you own your house. The state will never let you own your house. Ever. You're not fit to own a house. You can't do that. That's why they changed the uh, Constitution once read in pursuit of... Um, it said once property, and now it says happiness. What was it? Pursuit of some three things, and the last one used to be property, and they changed it to happiness. I've been away a long time. I forget these things. It must be the Alzheimer's kicking in, or maybe the marijuana. I do not know. So, I'll let you figure it out. But anyway. Uh, this we have a face in the crowd over here, and he seems to have an opinion about give me defense dollars or give me cocaine money. Ooh, there must be a compromise. Well written. Ooh, that should piss off people. I don't know. Well, not the people in the room right now. I'm looking to see. Ah, we lost my number one fan. Oh, well. He didn't stick around to hear me tell him how wonderful he is for making me laugh. I'm sad. But I think I'll get over it. <laughs> but the funny part about life is when you're doing things, when you're physically in the middle of something, sometimes the words don't come to you to explain properly what you're thinking or how you mean what you're thinking. And... We do it on the internet with the typing all the time because words are misinterpreted. You know, you write something and you typo or you use the wrong word and it changes the whole structure of what you wrote. To the reader. Maybe not to the writer, but that's what, that's what I'm saying is you can correct a verbal error way quicker than a, a typo. And I don't know why that works that way. But it seems like it, who there like it's a contest. Whoever wrote it first, nee, 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 boo boo. I wrote it first. You're wrong. I mean, wow. When when did that happen to adults? I mean, I spent a part of my afternoon today. I got, went to pick up Cirque early. She got an early train. Came back from the city. But just before I left, <laughs> I. I had to have some fun with uh, a couple of the people in the chat. And this is what I meant about assume the assumption. Is certain people want to argue about who's right and who's wrong. And that has nothing to do with anything. That's probably the least important component to the equation is who's right and who's wrong. That's That's actually to me the distraction from ever finding out you don't own the home you think you own. Or that you don't get the services you think you pay for through your taxes because all that money just goes to pay an interest debt. You're not getting shit. We're all working on promissory notes. And we pass them around among, among ourselves. We use debit cards and we use cards and we use currency. But it's all representing debt because there's no finance backing it up maybe it'll pay maybe it won't we're all saying yeah we'll pay it sure 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 so while we're playing this charade the people that run finance are they're just basically stealing everything that's not bolted down to something else but it's a real weird slippery technicality i don't know how to put words to because they've exposed the Federal Reserve for what it truly is. And what a horrible mess they've made of the finance system. This, that, and the other. I mean, like I said, what was it, Tuesday night? The idiots that actually voted to have a central bank run, you know, print the U.S. money, what a group of morons they were. If they didn't know the mess that they have... Uh, started that they had set us up to go forward into then what were they sitting in the powers of position for in the first place and <laughs> whoops
Ooh, that was a good one. Anyway, I was trying to read and smoke. That didn't work. So I come up with, yeah, that's crazy, Flash. Somebody, I'm always right, and everyone else is always wrong. Well, Bob Welch said that in a song in 1975. <laughs> Wasn't a very good song, but it did make a point. We both can't be wrong. I must be right. There you go. <laughs> wow, man. I got barking spiders up here. Oh, I saw Cirque was showing me this uh, link earlier tonight about this spider grabber. It's made out of, like, uh, nylon. And it encloses the spider. It's on an arm, and it you push it down. You put it down, and it... it the spider goes right up into the center of it to climb, and as it does, it draws the mesh. It won't like wire, but it's uh, it's like a real soft brush. So the, for the person that's afraid of handling the spider, they can grab it with that thing and put them outside if they don't want to kill it. So, hold on one second. So, what would you have is, what, how do they write that in the ad? For uh, the non-combative person, you know, somebody that doesn't want to kill the spider but doesn't like them. I forget the way they wrote it, yeah, word for word. But the idea was brilliant because uh, Cirque doesn't like to kill anything. So, when she first had her first few encounters with these spiders, she didn't really understand. They weren't going to do anything to her. She just saw a spider. Ah! And a lot of people react that way, male and female. Now, I'm not, luckily, I'm not one of them. Spider webs, maybe, because you don't know what the fuck you're walking into and you do that ninja shit, look like a moron. But hey, if you don't get bit by the spider, you can tell everybody, see, worked, huh? Anyway, hold on one second. I got to go do, give me 30 seconds. Thanks for your patience there, folks. I had a little uh, reaction to my smoking paraphernalia. And I uh, thought it would be probably a good idea to go not do it on the radio live. What do you think of that? So, anyway. Well, uh, uh, what are we going to talk about? Because... Uh, hmm. Lately, it's just been a lot of strife and trouble and problems and winter and people aren't happy, you know. The political stage is being set for yet another war. What was the other one? Nicaragua? Venezuela? I don't know. America's running out of places to attack as far as I'm concerned. So they're going to have to do reruns and then lie to the public about, well, we've never been here before. But why don't you try explaining the bases all along the border? But they don't get to that. And then that UN shit, right? What the United States does is it sets up to set, send in arms with um, food aid. But what they do in this legal shit game that we play... Uh, the U.S. goes in without United Nations approval because, you know, everybody knows it's a big fucking game anyway. So they play this game and they try to get the arms in there so they can arm the enemy and do this, that and the other and take over the government. But the <laughs> they they blocked it because nobody asked for it. Nobody's asking the United States to do anything. Very seldom does anybody ask. The U.S. just bullies its way in. It's like that. It's like a like cockroaches. Once they're there, man, getting rid of them. Whoo, that could take a while, you know. 
depends on what you're fighting the enemy with. And the kind of enemy that I'm talking about, it adapts to what you do to kill it. And it's been proven in history a few times over about the power of the guerrilla forces against the uniformed, straight-line, obvious enemy, you know. So what do we do? Send a bunch of dumb old dingleberries over to some foreign fucking country where they couldn't get water and give them guns and camouflage uniforms to wear amongst the population. Hmm. You know, chances are people would already know they weren't one of them by the way they looked, but no, let's throw some armament and some fatigues and We'll do some of that, uh, you know, that uh, SWAT stuff and take out some terrorists. Uh, and, and we've been falling for this. Not we, me, but we as a collective. Been falling for the same crap. And it goes back to since Christ, since they started doing wars. Misdirection and false reports it did a lot of damage to the army of the uh, other side, depending on what you could pull off and con them into believing. So, you know, just because we're in the electronic age and we have instant everything doesn't mean you can still, you can't run a war. Wars, they're not supposed to happen. We, we force that on each other because we're idiots. And I'm going to prove that using Vinny. Vinny is my experiment in terror because me and Vinny in a lot of ways see life very similarly and then on another level I don't give a flying fuck but there's an educated part of me educated by my peers and, and people I've met along life's road that gave me the information that Vinny has I just don't care to uh I don't care to apply it. I'm a cricket, like uh, Hal says. I don't want a followers and people looking up to me and all that crap. I'm just the same as you are. That's the that's probably what hurts the most. If you don't like me, it's probably because you know you know there's there's nothing to be afraid of. I don't want nothing from you. <laughs> and when you tell people you don't want nothing from them, that makes them actually more suspicious than just saying hey i want something from you and they go well what is it walk up to somebody and look them right in the fucking eye and go you know what you don't have shit i want walk away <laughs> what what's wrong with me <laughs> you'd be amazed what we're doing everything wrong as far as uh, changing a mind changing a mind is never done with force force just makes you fight harder so I'm not changing anybody's mind about nothing. The only mind I can change in this whole life is mine. I can conform to the thoughts of my wife if I choose to. It make life more comfortable when I do that. Or I can stand my ground and believe what I've always believed. Whatever choice I make. That, see, that's what I mean about the an individual doesn't really exist anymore because alone you're nobody but if you're in a group and there's 30 million of you idiots well then everything must be right all these people can't be wrong yeah yeah they can, they're very wrong and i think that the, the truth shows in itself by the the, the statements and the questions Asked and made by people of uh, statehood. You know, they're the biggest complainers about how things are going in the first damn place. It's the ones that voted for somebody. I didn't vote for that there Obama fella. Or I voted for the other fella and look what I got. Well, how do you tell these people the bad news is that you were never going to get <laughs> anything. And you still won't. Even if you got the guy you got, you're still being reamed like just like everybody else. You, why you can't see that? You 
think you're special. I wonder what that special thing is about. I'm one of the good guys. Look at my hat. <laughs> Never mind what you, how you treat people. You can walk all over everybody and treat them all like shit all day long. But you know what? I'm special. I voted for Trump. Mm. I wonder how far that really goes in real life, you know. But I, unfortunately, I don't have a Starbucks around here to go experiment at, you know, and go in there and start spewing a bunch of shit to rile everybody up and and prove their inferiority. No. I can type about it all I want on the internet, though. They got a Copenhagen at the airport, or Copen. They got a Starbucks at the Copenhagen airport, and it's a quarter to two out here, so I'm running a little short on brain cells at this particular moment. Now it's 20 till. See if I can't scrounge it up another thought or two for my Dorn fans out there in the RealLibertyMedia.com. Because, oh yeah, I brought up a name. I don't remember to who. But I wrote the name down because she was a big influence in the uh, in the Hollywood thing back in the day. I'm talking pre-50s, I'm pretty sure. Her name was Frances Farmer. And Frances Farmer was an actress and uh, outspoken. Hold on a minute. Did I hear you? Wow, I thought I heard my wife calling me. It must have been the headphones playing games. Weird. Hmm. Not only am I wearing my mega hat signed by the dump himself, but I'm wearing my lucky ball washing underwear too. That's right, because in the Republican Party, being a good ball washer can take you places money won't go. You know, they don't take cash to let you fly. They don't take cash to let you pay your mortgage. They don't let you let you. Think about this. this is how I'm saying this, people, to get you to go, what the fuck is he talking about? They do not accept U.S. currency at certain levels of finance. Now, how... How can you do that? Wait a minute. And everybody knows that you can't pay your electric bill in cash. Where are you going to pay it? Oh, you go down to the little store where they got all the poor people go. And you do some kind of shit paperwork magic. <laughs> yeah, that's me, Vinny. Mega Flash. I was making fun of America. I come up with AmeriClean. I'm going to go to the doctor and get me an AmeriClean so I can be free of America, by God, country. And I don't know who in the world thinks I want to become a fucking Dane, but I think the Danes would realize I was an imposter the minute I spoke because uh, I don't speak with a Danish accent. Even if I spoke the Danish, you know what I mean? It's like, you can't tell me that an English-speaking, grown-up in America, been in America all their fucking life American, doesn't look down at somebody that speaks English in broken English. That's the uh, exceptionalism I grew up with. All my peers were raging fucking uh, exceptionalists. Oh, yeah, we was the greatest. We were better than everybody. This, that, and the other, and da, 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 and nothing changed. Still the same crap being spewed out of the same people. And the funny thing is, they wore baseball hats when I was a kid. And you know what? They still wearing baseball hats now. So nothing changed. I guess the name of the thief in power changes every eight years, but the rest of it, not so much. Make America wash their balls again. Ooh. I don't know. I think Trump likes it when other people wash his balls. I have a funny feeling that man hasn't seen his balls since the probably the Bush administration. I mean, he's looking a little, I don't know, hefty. 
you know, for a busy man who's running around the world making lots of intelligent decisions, <clears throat> he has the uh, the physical attributes of a guy that should have been shot and put out in a field about four years ago. But, hey, that's just my personal opinion looking on. He don't look like the healthiest fella in the room. I mean, he's no George Bush or anything, but, wow, what a mess. And, like, the other day, I'm sorry, but when I think about the face of America, I come up with Pelosi and Bush, or Pelosi and Bush, Pelosi, yeah, Bush too, but Trump, Pelosi, Obama, Bush, you know, the usual suspects, and no matter how far back I go, I never find any pride in any of it. Go back to Kennedy. He was just a womanizing fucking crazy guy. But he wanted to make his own money. <laughs> so, I don't know. He, he's apparently tried to expose the secret societies. And look where that got him. Dead. Then they even lied about how he died. So they, the public wouldn't know it was his own people that did it to him. And you can see Lyndon Johnson standing next to that woman after her husband was murdered and just grinning like a Cheshire cat on uh, Air Force One. Rumor that I read that he he was sworn in on the airplane. Before, they didn't even land it on ground yet. They're always swearing him in as president of the USA so he can make the important decisions and save us from all the problems. I just got one closing question to ask all you, you know, intelligent-minded people out there in reallibertymedia.com and beyond, is what happened? <laughs> it was so good once, and now it's a ball of shit, and it's not just a ball of shit in one spot. It's like a ball of shit, all of it. The The more I see of the world the more I like where I'm at. It's so, the world is very depressing. Mm. If you're not a raging uh, depressive maniac when you get on the internet webs, give it three or four weeks. You know, And if you read enough of the right links and you find out the truth about enough stuff and then you find out just how physically trapped you are, mm, I'm amazed people listen. You know, It's not good news. And it's not useful news. You can't actually go out and physically apply all this stuff right away. And the things you can change, take balls, wow. Dropping that high blood pressure medication was probably my lifesaver. Probably kept me alive this long. But, on the other hand, see, people go, well, yeah, you're just lucky. Well, no, because I did the undo, the undo, undo. Nobody wants to do this. I found out what the side effects were to the drug. I didn't even know there were side effects to the drug. Never occurred to me. I've never been a drug pill taker. So I trusted the input I got and followed the directions because I trusted other people. And when those other people weren't around to trust anymore, all of a sudden... The information to show me the truth showed up on the internet, and I went, no way. And uh, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> and, of course, just my word against anybody else's. But I would just challenge you. Look at the look at the reality of this imaginary disease they've got most of us bogged down in, high blood pressure. Of course, if you irritate people, their blood pressure is going to go up. What are you, crazy? But it doesn't mean it's going to stay up. See, the pills help but stay up so that you'll get sick. And when they give you their little tests and they make sure that you're in the right nasty kind of fucking mood that puts you in that blood pressure range when they give you the test. But eh, that's just another matter of opinion. But I've yet to meet a doctor or a lawyer that was worth his fucking weight and dog shit. But that's just a personal opinion, Vincent, because I've obviously not met any of the right doctors in 59 years. They all eluded me. Hmm. Life is just a miracle, Vincent. What do you think of that? Huh? 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 Anyway, I think I'm going to call that a show. And 
thank everybody for hanging out with me here tonight on 20% off. Thanks, Rob, for that <laughs> that insightful little ditty about the legal system. That was fun. And I like to read them without knowing what they are even more. <coughs> One is a you know, gesture of trust. Then, and then, but the other part is then when I actually read it, I got to change a few things or it makes me feel ridiculous reading because some of these people can't write worth a flying diddle. You know, they, they can get the idea across, but their, their wording just rubs me wrong. I'm more creative. I like to make fun of shit and have fun. So, uh, let's see. What do we got? We got, this is the closing of 20% off and I'm still flash and tomorrow okay tomorrow is friday your friday my friday all right that's today but i'm gonna go to bed <laughs> living in the future is a lot of work not don't don't try this without a net <laughs> anyway we got grammy mary coming on the rocket chair at six on the east coast and she gave me a little slap on the butt last night on her rocket chair Wednesday night. I got a giggle out of that. It was nice to hear Miss Mary back in full voice, too, without that little bullwinkle scratch in the back. Because she got sick. She got nailed pretty good with whatever out there in that cold weather. So anyway, just wanted to say one more time. Hey, Miss Mary. She threatened to come to the dork table on Saturday if she doesn't have to work. I don't know if she's going to do it, but she's always welcome. Hey, Vinny. And uh, Friday night, after the Grammy Mary extravaganza, we got Miss Moose and Grimner in the Freaker's Ball. Hey, Grimner's found a new toy on his... Uh, on his Linux, I believe he was playing with a new system to play music with tonight. And he typed something about it being part of the package software so that he didn't really even know he had it. So he found something new to entertain himself with. So Friday night might be even more different in the music shit than it usually is. Who knows with Grimm. And then Saturday, we got me and Vinny and maybe Mary... And we'll pull, pull for uh, pleasure on this one. And I'm doing the dork table on a Saturday afternoon at noon Eastern time. And go uh, then. Oh, wait. Vinny might do a show Friday afternoon, but I don't know. He says yes, and he says no, then he says yes. If he does, he'll do that show to Friday at 1 p.m. on the East Coast. Okay. Then Sunday morning, we've got blues in the morning. And to the trivia game, into 3 o'clock on the West Coast, we've got Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. Then Monday night, we were getting a little bit of a lineup here, beyond me just taking up a bunch of crap. Uh, we got Grimner comes back on a solo thing on Grim Leftovers. That's his stash of stories that he didn't get uh, enough time to... Uh, read on the on the freakers ball so he picked up on an, on an extra hour to entertain us with his insat and input and it's been fun and then tuesday me and vinnie come back with in a perfect world where we argue about who owns the color blue we don't care we fight like little kids it's ridiculous ridiculous but it's fun i enjoy it doing it with him it's just the way we get along is this opposite crap he's always seeing one side of something and then i see it a different way anyway and then uh we got back to wednesday we got miss mary one more time doing the rocket chair podcast on wednesday evening at six o'clock on the east coast and then uh Thursday night rolls around. I don't think there's anybody new come up on Thursday yet. If I haven't noticed it. Uh, then it's me again on my midnight show, 20% off. So thanks for everybody playing along. Let me close out all this stuff and call it a night and send Grimner some nudes. And uh, thanks a lot for playing along on 20% off over and 